OK, we can speak to Brendan Thomas Noon now, who's a research fellow at the University of Sydney from where he joins us live. Uh, thank you for talking to us. Um, I, I guess we have to start with North Korea, really, don't we? Because it was just last week that the Chinese foreign minister said the situation was so tense that uh, the conflict, possible conflict between North Korea and South Korea and the United States was like two accelerating trains that are heading for a collision. So that's the first thing he's got to deal with. Well, we know that the Trump administration is currently undertaking a top-to-bottom policy review of its options towards North Korea, and this is certainly something uh, Tillerson is foc focusing on in his trip to Northeast Asia. Uh, the policy review will probably look at uh, everything from military options, further U.S. military deployments to the region, to diplomatic ones. And so that's going to be the main focus of his trip to the region, I think. Um, do you think that there's any possibility that uh, an alternative approach to these military exercises will be even considered, given the fact that North Korea considers uh, these thousands of, of U.S. troops and, and hundreds of thousands of Korean troops um, showing a mighty display of military might every year? They see that as highly provocative uh, and almost as preparation for war. Do you think that there is any possibility that that will be considered... Uh, and, and, and will sort of be reduced, de-escalated, in order to maybe placate Pyongyang? I don't think so. I think that anything in this administration is that uh, there's a danger of them leaning too heavily towards military options when it comes to, or comes to North Korea. Uh, you know, some of the military options that have been or probably are on the table is everything from deploying more missile defenses to the region, which we know has angered Beijing, uh, or to increasing these exercises, or there's even talk of uh, potentially redeploying uh, U.S. nuclear weapons to South Korea. Uh, now, that's sort of far off, and we're not there yet. We don't really know, uh, you know, until the policy review is implemented or comes out, we don't know. But uh, any of those military options are likely to aggravate the situation. But the real danger here is that Tillerson uh, may not have the sway within this administration to really bring the diplomatic elements uh, to the North Korea issue that are really needed. Indeed. Uh, and um, so the danger here is, is that, you know, this administration might be uh, leaning a bit too hard. Sorry, because I, I, I was just going to refer to a paper that you've written recently in which you called for careful diplomacy. Um, amidst this, uh, this heightened tension, um, how likely is that? And, as, you, as you've already pointed out, how empowered would Rex Tillerson be in order to pursue that? Well, this is the problem, is that I don't think anybody in these capitals in Tokyo, Beijing or Seoul really know how much power Tillerson has. Uh, you know, we know he meets with the president regularly, but uh, he's not striving with any press pool. It's not really a good way to stake out policy positions that then tie the administration down to anything, as James Mattis has done in early when he went to the region uh, in January. Uh, but there's a lot of moving pieces here. Uh, there might be a new government in Seoul. There's already tensions between China and the United States over the South China Sea and the One China policy. Uh, so Tillerson's going to need to bring all of that together to be able to put together any sort of diplomatic solution towards North Korea. All right, Brendan Thomas Noon talking to us live from Sydney. Thank you very much.